Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today, we're talking which type of drone you should buy. Now, this is a question that I get asked all the time, whether you should buy a regular drone, which we'll call a camera drone for this video, or if you should buy a racing drone, which is an FPV drone. So if you're someone that's struggling to answer this question, then stick around because this video is for you. Okay, so there are a bunch of things that you need to consider when trying to decide between which type of drone to buy. And we're gonna cover them all in this video. So the first one is obvious, and that's type of shots. Now you've probably seen a bunch of crazy videos of FPV drones flying around on the internet, flying through things, flying at super fast speeds, and the whole time you really feel like you're right there with the drone, hence the first person view. Now, this type of footage can only be achieved by an FPV drone. An FPV drone basically gives you the complete freedom to fly however you want in any orientation. And basically, this is a type of feeling that you can get with any other type of drone. And that's the main intrigue around FPV drones, trying to get these super cool, dynamic, unique looking shots. Now, on the other hand, Camera drones fly in a very linear fashion. So most cinematic drone shots that you see in movies when drones are showing like a huge landscape or following a car very, very smoothly from a very high angle, those are all taken with camera drones. So trying to decide which type of shots that you want out of your drone is the first crucial step that'll help you determine whether you get an FPV drone or whether you get a camera drone. So that's something I really want you guys to think about. Do you want those super fast dynamic shots where you can fly through things and turn at super high speeds? Or do you want very stable, smooth looking cinematic shots? Because that's what these two drones will give you. Also, while I'm at this, I'm gonna to touch on photography real quick. If you're someone who wants to take photos with their drones, well, FPV drones are just not capable of doing that. Like that's not even a feature. So if you wanna take photos, then you need to buy a camera drone because it's the only way you're gonna do aerial photography. Now I have the DJI FPV drone, which is capable of taking photos, but to be honest, they're complete trash and not even worth it. It's not the purpose of FPV drones. Now, jumping into our next section, we're gonna talk about stabilization. Now, this one might sound a little silly, but stick with me. Okay, so most camera drones are stabilized on a three axis gimbal, which means that the footage is always gonna be buttery smooth, always level, and it's always gonna look stabilized right out of camera. You don't have to do any post-processing, you don't have to turn on any feature, or any function to make this happen. The drone just does this because it comes with a built-in three-axis gimbal. Now, on the other hand, when you take a look at FPV drones, in most cases for traditional FPV drones, you're gonna have an action camera like a GoPro or like an Osmo Action or something like that mounted on top of your drone, which means that there's absolutely no gimbal stabilization. So you have a couple of options here. If your action camera has built-in digital stabilization, you can turn this on. It won't do the best job, but it'll provide some stabilization. So you have the option of doing that. But in most cases, what people do is that they'll turn off all all image stabilization on their action camera they'll take it into post once they're done filming and then they'll stabilize it there so without getting too much into the stabilization world a lot of people like to use real steady and they'll use that to stabilize their post uh, footage which will give them completely buttery smooth gimbal like footage so it's possible to achieve very stable footage using FPV drones you just have to take that extra step to do some post-processing work. So if you're someone that doesn't want to do any of this and you just want to take your drone shot straight out of camera and be able to use them without doing any extra work, stabilization is something that you're going to have to think about and that's definitely going to come into play when you're trying to decide which type of drone you should buy, whether that's FPV or if that's a regular camera drone. Okay, so we can't have a comparison video without talking about gear 
and price. So I'm just gonna start with the camera drone because it's much, much simpler. So this is the DJI Air 2S and it costs about a thousand USD. Now I would say this is kind of a prosumer level drone. So if you're just looking to get into camera drones, you can pick up a DJI Mini 2 Fly More combo for like 500 bucks. So it's a pretty reasonable entry point and entry price to get into camera drones. Now I have the Fly More combo. So all of my gear includes the DJI Air 2S drone, the controller that comes with it, the batteries that I have for the drone, and they all fit nicely into this little camera bag that comes with the Fly More combo. So it's a very light, easy, and compact setup to take around with me. I can basically take it anywhere with no issues. Now, in contrast, with the FPV drone, you have a bunch of stuff. So you have the actual FPV drone itself. You have a controller for the FPV drone. Now you also have your FPV goggles. You have these massive batteries. And if you're mounting a camera on top of your drone, then you're also gonna have an action camera like this GoPro, for example. So that's a lot of stuff to carry around with you. And there's no like, real bag that comes with FPV drones where everything fits perfectly inside of it. You generally have to go out and buy a third party bag and they're not as compact as the camera drone bags. They're pretty heavy, they're big, and they're just bulky to transport with you. So if portability is something that you're looking for, then you might wanna consider a camera drone because they're just much easier to carry with you. There's less stuff, there's no goggles, the batteries are not as big, it's just easy to transport. Now, let's talk about the cost for FPV drones. Now, you can jump into FPV drones for anywhere between $500 to $2,500, depending on what kind of FPV drone you want. But this cost is a little bit misleading. And let me explain why. When you fly FPV drones, you might crash your drone. And this is gonna require you to repair it, which costs money. Now, you might also be flying your FPV drone and you might just lose it. It might just drop out of the sky completely. Now, that means you're out of a drone and you're likely out of an action camera. So just to replace the action camera, if you're flying with like a GoPro Hero 9 Black, for example, is gonna cost you just 500 USD right there, right out of the gate. So the cost for FPV drones can mount up really quickly, depending on how you fly, how much you fly, you might get into a crash or an accident. So the cost is ever changing. Whereas with the camera drone, what you see is kind of what you pay for and that's what it is. Now you might be asking, why am I crashing my drone? Why am I losing it? Well, let's talk about safety. Now, I think it's very important that everyone become very familiar with safety when flying drones because I think it's very important that we're always as safe as possible when we're operating our drones. So let's touch on camera drones first because they have two major advantages and that's GPS and sensors. So basically with the GPS system in camera drones, they always know where they are. So that means that if you ever lose connection between your remote and your drone, the camera drone will actually automatically fly back to where it first took off from because it remembers that within its GPS data. So it's very easy to not lose your camera drone. Also, they have built-in sensors, meaning that they can detect objects in front of them, behind them, under them, on top of them, and even to the side, depending on which model of drone you have. Basically, they have this 360 obstacle avoidance sphere around them, meaning that if you're about to run into something, the drone will detect that and it'll either break or it'll try and fly around it depending on what settings you have turned on and what drone you have, which is an amazing feature that really keeps the drone really, really safe and basically makes it kind of crash proof, not completely, but for the most part, we kind of say that camera drones are crash proof in this modern era of camera drones. Now, in contrast, FPV drones don't have any of that, meaning that there's no sensor. So if you wanna go flying straight into a wall, it's gonna let you do that. It's not gonna stop you. And your FPV drone is literally going to shatter into a thousand pieces going full speed into a brick wall. It's not gonna stop itself. It also doesn't have a built-in GPS system, meaning that if you're flying like kind of far from you, like over a river and you lose connection, well, guess what? That FPV drone is going straight into the ocean and 
it's gone. Like it's just gonna literally drop out of the sky the moment the moment that it loses connection. So it's really important to consider those things um, because depending on how risk averse or how risky you are, it's definitely gonna determine which type of drone you end up buying. Now, I personally have the DJI FPV drone, which does have sensors built in, which are turned off and fully manual. And, but the most important factor is that it has a GPS system, meaning that if I ever lose connection with my goggles or my controller, it will actually fly back just like a regular camera drone. But this is a very, very rare special feature on a very few limited amount of FPV drones. So the FPV drone that you're gonna get if it's a traditional FPV drone will likely not have this feature. So that's definitely something you wanna keep in mind. Now, the final thing I wanna talk about, and this is gonna sound a little crazy, but I wanna talk about batteries. Now look, for regular camera drones, we're used to having the typical smart battery that you see in most general electronics that you'll have in your house. Meaning that, hey, I wanna charge my battery, so I'm just gonna plug it into its charger, plug the charger into a wall outlet, and it's gonna charge regularly, and that's it. So those are the type of batteries that come with camera drones, and camera drone battery life has gotten really, really good over the years, so now you'll get about 30 minutes of flight time, which is pretty sick. Now, with FPV drones, they use something called LiPo batteries. Now, I wanna give a disclaimer out there, I'm not trying to scare anybody, but LiPo batteries can definitely be dangerous. They've exploded in the past, they've caused fires, and that only happens when people don't take proper care of them. So it's really important to take proper care of LiPo batteries. And without getting into too much detail, LiPo batteries require you to have an understanding of how voltages work, how electricity works, and how charging batteries work, because they require a special type of charger and you need to use it to charge your batteries at a certain voltage. And if you don't use your batteries after charging them, you actually need to decharge them. Yes, you need to decharge your batteries, otherwise they can definitely be a hazard. So using LiPo batteries in general is a whole new skill set that you need to learn and master before actually using LiPo batteries. So if you're looking to get into FPV droning and you wanna use LiPo batteries, I highly recommend that you watch a bunch of videos on YouTube. There are a ton of them out there that'll teach you how to use LiPo batteries, how to charge them, how to store them, and how to de-charge them. So this is something that people don't actually consider when they're trying to decide between which type of drone you should buy. But I think it's absolutely crucial that you understand the difference between a LiPo battery and a typical smart battery. Now, the DJI FPV drone does use smart batteries for its FPV system. So I think that's another huge advantage for the DJI FPV drone, but it is the only type of drone that uses a smart battery in the FPV space. So if you're building a traditional FPV drone, you will definitely be using LiPo batteries. So please, please take that into consider consideration when you're trying to decide between which type of drone you should buy. Okay, so now that I've laid out all the facts, here's what I think about which type of person should get which type of drone. If you've never flown a drone before, get a camera drone. They're just much easier to learn and much easier to get into. The barrier to entry is super low. If you're someone that's really cost conscious or if you're really risk averse, meaning you don't like to take risks, get a camera drone because it can get expensive to fly FPV, especially when you're doing repairs all the time. And if you feel like you're someone who panics very easily, if they think they're about to run into something, then stay away from FPV because it can be quite a nerve wracking sport and flying camera drones is much more of a relaxed experience. Now, if you're someone who's been flying camera drones for a while and you wanna try and get a new flavor of drone into your footage and you want to try and get more dynamic shots then i highly recommend trying fpv but i do want to give a bit of a warning jumping into fpv is not as easy it takes a lot of time a lot of practice and a lot of patience it's definitely much harder to get into and i really recommend that if you're trying to get into it you practice a lot in a simulator before jumping into the real thing now i don't want to make it sound like i'm hating on fpv drones or anything i have one and i love flying fpv it's just something that's a little bit harder to get into and that's it for this video guys and as always, I hope you learned something new. And if you did, please leave a like at the bottom of the page. Smash that like button. It really helps out the video. If you guys enjoyed hanging out with me and you liked 
the type of content that I put out in relation to drones and photography and all that stuff, then definitely subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. Other than that, that's all I have for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. And until then, keep creating.